This is a project that was conducted at Louisa County High School in Mineral, Virginia by three different classes with myself as teacher and our goal was to find and plot changes in temperature and precipitation over the last hundred or so years over both the United States and the global picture. The classes that were involved were the geospatial technology class, the principles of technology class, and both of those two classes, the students were dual enrolled at Paul D. Camp Community College, and also the physics classes at Louisa County High School. We obtained our data from the internet, from uh, NOAA and from the uh, East Anglia uh, College in the United Kingdom, and we're very grateful to the Esri Company for providing us the ArcGIS program that we were able to use to plot the data with. This is not a forecast of global warming. This project was attempting to determine what's been going on in the United States and the Earth historically in the past 112 years, and any predictions about the future are not warranted. This is an outline of what we'll be going through in this presentation where the data came from, how we used it to make a statistical line of best fit, the uh, way we used the line of best fit to plot uh, temperature or precipitation changes on our data points, and then we'll give you some results of the continental United States and also for the world, and then we'll make some points about this data. We got the data from two major places. One from the United States, we used some NOAA data where they had very good records of temperature, precipitation, and a lot of other things uh, over the period 1895 to 2006 for every state. And down there you see a uh, link to the NOAA data. And for the worldwide data, we used uh, records that were collected uh, in the United Kingdom at the University of East Anglia which has uh, an, uh, an enormous assortment uh, of data on climate records from our same period for precipitation, for temperature, and uh, almost the same period for uh, precipitation. Precipitation records were for the land area only. There were none over the oceans. And down there you see two links that show uh, where the data was obtained uh, on the internet from the UK. It was an enormous amount of data, uh, much more than your high school classes could handle, so I did simplify the data by putting it into Microsoft Excel spreadsheet files and uh, compressed the data from daily, in some cases, uh, data into annual data arranged by year, so that what the students saw was, um, for example, in the United States, a 112-year uh, picture where they saw the average annual temperature and the average precipitation for each location uh, per, per year as a set of numbers that they could put on a graph. Uh, for the worldwide data, uh, we divided the uh, United States into, a, um, the, the world into a five degree by five degree grid, latitude and longitude, and used the data available within that five by five grid to determine uh, what we could say about that grid. Uh, for each of the places that we evaluated, uh, we took a look at the average change in temperature and precipitation, did a regression line to get a, s a fit, and used the regression line uh, slope for, uh, to determine that particular point. So in the NOAA data where we had state peers of sample, this is Alabama uh, from 1895 to 2006 and that's the average annual temperature scatter, scatter plot with the blue dots of the average of the annual temperature in Alabama over those years. And then the purple line would be the regression line. Uh, from this, we would say that over the long term, uh, temperature in Alabama has been changing at the rate of a decline of about eight-tenths of a degree Fahrenheit per century. Uh, here's California, same way. Uh, Scatter plot arranged in the same fashion, regression line obtained in the same fashion. California, we would say uh, the temperature has 
been on the rise, statistically an average, uh, of about at the rate of about two-thirds of a degree Fahrenheit per century. And from the world data we got from East Anglia, this would be uh, the 5x5 five five grid centered on latitude 62.5 uh, north, longitude 52.5 uh, uh, west, which puts you in southern Greenland. Uh, here we divided the data into seven-year periods. So each point represents a seven-year average of precipitation or a seven-year average of uh, temperature. The precipitation in the purple line with the scale on the left, temperature with the blue line with the scale on the right. Putting a regression line to each of those two, we would determine that for that location, the temperature was rising by an average of about a half a degree centigrade per century. But the precipitation was uh, also increasing at the rate of about 11 inches per century. Next here would be northeast Nigeria, uh, the 5x5 five five grid, what we found for that. Uh, same way, using the uh, seven-year uh, points, uh, temperature declining about a half a degree centigrade per century. Precipitation, on average, declining by about an inch per century. I believe we have one more, northern Australia, uh, where we found a rise in temperature and a rise in precipitation statistically from the regression. One more point uh, near Mar del Plata, Argentina. I think you see how it's going. Uh, increase in temperature over the centuries, increase of precipitation over the century. For the United States, we had very complete data. Uh, every, every state, NOAA had compiled very good data and there were no missing data points. So we were able to come up with data for every state of the, con of the 48 contiguous states. Uh, for the world data that we got from East Anglia, it wasn't quite as good. When you take a look at the globe and put it on a 5 by 5 degree resolution, that's potentially 2,592 grid points. However, many of them had either no data or very little data. So we had to make a decision as to which data points to include in our model. We resolved it this way. Um, if in the 5x5 five five grid we would use data for a particular year only if data existed for all 12 months in that year to get an average um, temperature or precipitation uh, for, the, for the year as a whole. Then for the seven year interval we would not use that as part of our statistic unless we had at least one complete year of data within that seven years. In many cases we had all seven years, but in some cases um, in the more rural uh, parts of the earth uh, we had to be satisfied with less. Finally, we would only plot the grid point if we had at least 12 out of the 16 seven-year intervals uh, showing uh, in our statistics. This may be a little bit confusing, but we'll show you in a minute how much data we were able to use. For the United States, every, every state worked. And for the United States, here's where we started. Here's the average temperature of the 48 contiguous states in 1895, not as recorded, but as the statistical best line fit showed that on average it should have been. If you and here we have, based upon the regression line, uh, what changes have occurred in the, in the 112 year period for each state. Uh, in the red would be those states where, on average, the temperature is increasing. And uh, the numbers on the scale there show temperature increase per year, not per century. Uh, in the, and the green would be places where the average temperature is declining. So you see, interestingly, the southeastern part of the United States is actually getting cooler, those southern states. And uh, the state of Maine actually showed a decline in temperature over the 100 years. Um, then to draw contours of this, what we did was acted as if 
uh, the data points that we had were in the center of each state. So there were the centers of each state. And we used the ESRI ArcGIS program to give us, and the contours looked like this. So here you see, not on a state-by-state -state basis, but uh, for the United States as a whole, where it's getting hotter and where it's getting cooler. Obviously, it's getting warmer in more places than it's getting cooler. But there are two spots in the United States where the temperature over the 100-year period actually um, decreased. Here's the precipitation map of the United States done in a similar fashion, the contour map of precipitation. And I think what you can see immediately, the same places where the temperature was getting lower, the precipitation is increasing. And in the Midwestern part of the country, where the over the last 112 years it's been getting warmer, it's also been getting dry. Now for the world. Uh, this is the UK East Anglia uh, data. And these are the points that were used to determine temperature. Uh, notice not every single place on the world is represented. Uh, but only those places where we felt we had sufficient uh, data to be statistically meaningful. Also uh, note that there's not really much data from either North or South Pole, and we didn't use any of it. For precipitation worldwide, the UK data provided no precipitation data over the oceans. So the only thing we had to go by was precipitation data over land masses. So you can see these are the spots in the land mass where we felt we had sufficient data to uh, do a precipitation. So globally, here's the 100-year-plus uh, map of changes in global temperature and where up to about the year 2006. And you can see that, as you might have expected, most of the Earth shows a warming trend. But some very significant areas on the Earth showed cooling trends, the blue indicating cooling trend. On the precipitation map, again, uh, oceans, no data. So we're only showing the uh, land masses. Uh, green indicates increasing precipitation over the past 100 years. Uh, red indicates decreasing precipitation over the uh, last 100 years. Notice um, west coast of Africa and east coast of South America seem almost to come together um, w with the same phenomenon. They're both getting drier. This map was put together to characterize areas on the Earth where for the last 100 years it's either been getting cooler and drier, cooler and wetter, hotter and drier, or hotter and wetter. Um, hotter and drier means if you've got a desert, it's becoming more of a desert. Cooler and wetter means that particularly in the case of the southeastern part of the United States, might be an explanation uh, consistent with the increasing uh, rainfall and uh, hurricanes that we've been noting uh, in the last several years, but that's a speculation. And uh, we also showed this on a rotating globe. Worldwide data that we showed on the flat map, but using the ESRI ARC globe program. Uh, we could plot it on the three-dimensional globe and show the globe as rotating. So here's your global temperature change globe. And next is your global precipitation change globe. But notice that the only thing that counts is the land masses. We didn't, we're not saying anything about the oceans because the